Slurs! I'm recording. Slurs! Oh shit! I'm gonna get banned! Oh my nuts! A building. And I've got news for you. That's like one of the greatest videos of all time. Do you want to know it's also a great video, Ollie? What? A Bigfoot farted in my living room. You should watch it. I'm back. Nerd! Okay. Nerd! Nerd! is missing something. Yeah, it's missing your mom. LOL. Hey, one Joe. Hey, Ollie. I want to know what... What do I need to add to this? I don't know. Okay. Uh, let me look in approximately. 20 minutes and get the gold in this attempt. Yes, if for those who are wondering, I am doing a 20 minute gold right now. Oh, did you guys see that, um, a clip of that pastor who did a sermon and was telling- and was saying that he will defend everyone from the ho from homosexual lesbian spirits? No. Oh, no, I, I haven't. It's fucking funny as hell. Dude, I swear to god. Some. Christians are some of the most people I've ever seen in my life. Bro, I said no slurs. Sad face. Oops, my bad. I forgot. I have a, I have a really bad memory. Like, genuinely. It's alright. Someone said it three times in one of my other videos. I'm not gonna murder you. Or will I? Dun dun dun. No, I don't want to be murdered. Ah, uh, too bad. That wouldn't, you have to. That wouldn't be very. That wouldn't be very skibbity toilet oh, of you. Oh, fuck off! I knew you were going to say that. As soon as I heard the word, that wouldn't be. I knew you were going to say something fucking stupid. Because <laughs> of course you would. Uh, that isn't. That prediction isn't isn't very sigma of you. I can't wait to kill myself. If you killed yourself, you wouldn't be the alpha male. Please, just end it. End it now. 
hee hee ha. I call on the flying spaghetti monster to take me out of this misery. <laughs> the flying spaghetti monster is crazy cool. Yeah, they call it like it's a religion. They call us Pastafarians. You don't know about the Pastafarians and the flying spaghetti monster? No, and I don't think I want to. <laughs> what? Damn, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta read up on it, or, or else you're gonna fail. Up. I mean, or else you're gonna. I don't know how to make a joke of this. Out of this. You would probably make a joke by making a joke. Wow, I, you're, you're so fucking insightful. Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. Thanks. You know, I, I, I'm very glad that I didn't say what I was just about to say. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. It I've was learned, this lore. I've learned when people it was something say, worse. I learned, I've learned that when people say, I'm not gonna say the thing, to trust them. I almost called you my cookie. That is not as bad as I thought it was. I thought you would think that that would be worse than. Okay. So. No. Whenever you say like I'm not gonna say that thing, uh, my mom she says like the most fucking wild unhinged shit. So I've just learned whenever she says I'm not gonna say that thing to trust her because um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I I also forget that not. Everybody is as uh, twisted minded as her sometimes. So uh... yeah, it's it's gonna it's hard to truly shock me. I'll just tell you that much. Banger strat.
balls, 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 balls. God. Funny how um, CP3 is both the uh, hardest yet most consistent checkpoint in the map. In my opinion, at least. Damn, I didn't hit the final thing. I, I love doing that speed change shit. It's so funny. I should actually clear them off. That was uncomfortable. That was uncomfortable as fuck. Holy shit.
crate, but... Risky, scary, whatever the fuck you want to call it, I'm alive.
sweaty. For obvious reason. I'm not gonna like tout this too long, but like first attempt is insane, man. This feels a lot more like a victory lap than a true ending to it. <laughs> Final input, that's it. Oh, 
Let's fucking go! Yes! What? Yay. Yay. Let's fucking go! Yes! My fifth heart is golden in... Three... It's like four days. I, like, I have three full days and then got it first attempt today. 27 minute golden. Um... I, I guess this is my new longest golden. So, um... Hells to the fuck to the yeah! That was awesome, actually. I had like six per 15 hours is not bad for my fifth hardest, because this is like definitely harder than World Abyss by like quite a quite a good margin. It's also a lot easier than um uh Solar Express. So I think this fits in mid-tier one, but oh my god, that was awesome! That was awesome, that was awesome. Yay, yeah, yay, yeah, yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was that was so cool. That was so awesome. That was that was so good. Oh my god. Um, the deaths on this map were infuriating. For about about half the deaths you have in this map are infuriating, but like, oh my god, I actually got this. Yay! Yay!
okay with this. If I die to this, I'm completely fine with it, honestly. Single-handedly, the most unlucky I have ever gotten in Celeste. That was miserable, like, that, that, at the end, that was just fucking miserable, like, I, I was at the point where every single death that should have pissed me off didn't piss me off, and I was just sitting there seething, or not even seething, I just felt nothing, I felt empty. It was a terrible feeling. This was not fun. It's a great map. I love it, but like fucking hell, dude. Never again, please. This size in a AAA game of this caliber is pretty low. You could probably make four thousand dollars quicker and easier just pretending to be a girl in RuneScape. So she called it an insulting offer, and everyone on the internet agreed because obviously. This is a pretty shitty deal. So she turned down the role and walked away and said that it's because they were only offering her that four grand for the whole game. She then urged fans to boycott Ban out of three and instead spend that money on charities instead. Now, Nintendo does what Nintendo does best. They ignored this whole situation. I think they're still trying to figure out how email works, so they probably never even saw this to begin with. But Platinum Games lead Hideki Kamiya did at least uh, become aware of this situation by making that post saying, you know, it's sad about the untruth out there and beware of my rules. The tweet reads like a monologue from a villain after they've been caught in Scooby-Doo, but the beware of my rules that he caps locked in there refers to his rule of if you speak English you get blocked. For many years now, Kamiya has been well known to block anyone that speaks English at him. His fucking block list is longer than the yellow page phone book. There are more people on his block list than there are registered in the goddamn US criminal database. It's, it's wild how many people he's blocked, so that's what he's talking about here. And for the last couple days, this is where the story had stopped. This is where the brakes were really pumped into full effect until last night. A Bloomberg article came out that really absolutely changed the entire situation here. Bloomberg, more like Bloomberg, because this shit was a bomb. The report comes from two people who were familiar with the negotiations, and the documentation was reviewed by Bloomberg and confirmed to be genuine. So according to them, Platinum Games really wanted to get Helena Taylor back in voicing Bayonetta. According to the documents, they didn't offer her $4,000 for the entire game. They offered her up to $4,000 per session for five sessions of four hours each. So about $1,000 per hour, which is very different than the claims Helena Taylor was leading us to believe. So in response to the initial offer here of the $4,000 per session, Taylor allegedly asked for a six-figure sum as well as residuals on the game, which Platinum declined and then after those negotiations fell through, 
She walked away and they took auditions for a new voice actress for Bayonetta. According to professional voice actors, that $4,000 per session rate that Helena Taylor was being offered is above the norm. Now, I do think it's important to mention that there's still plenty of room here for a debate on whether or not voice acting talent is paid reasonably. Uh, as I understand it, it's actually been a long-running thing for a while that voice actors get fucked in the face when it comes to what they're paid for their work, at least in comparison to other mediums, and I didn't realize how big this problem was. Even just recently, the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero dub actors came out and revealed that they were only getting paid $150 each for their roles. And these were huge roles. Like, that is outrageous. And I've seen plenty of actual fucking stupid brain takes from Twitter assholes who love to take their pants off and wiggle their little wiener around saying, voice acting's so easy, they shouldn't even be paid at all. They're paid in exposure more than anything. They should be grateful to even be in the game to begin with. It's an honor. I don't know why they're even asking for pay. A thousand dollars is too much for how easy the job is. And I think it's pretty clear how dumb that shit is. Voice acting is a legitimate talent that takes years to perfect, and it's a very important part of media, especially games. If you have shitty voice acting, the character is going to become a laughable joke and the narrative is going to fall flat on its face. We've seen it a million times before, and we'll see it a million more into the future. Voice acting is integral to these stories, and if you don't think so, then please just play the games on mute from now on. Put your money where your mouth is. I'd like to see how much you really connect with a game when it's just completely fucking muted throughout all of its cutscenes and shit. It is a big component, so I'm really tired of that dumb take. But Helena Taylor here, if all of this is true, which it seems like it is, is uh, the worst person to try and spark this kind of debate because she's just completely framed this wrongly by lying and manipulating everyone. She also did respond with an email saying that it's all an absolute lie and said Platinum was trying to save their ass and the game. She said she stood by everything she said in the video. I would like to put this whole bloody franchise behind me, quite frankly. Get on with my life in theater, she wrote. So this is an absolute dog shit response from Helena Taylor here. I, I don't even know where to begin. I guess we'll start with the obvious one. If this is all a lie, it should be extremely easy for her to prove that they're lying because she's already broken the NDA. You know, she's already wiped her whole ass with the NDA. You might as well just show the contract they offered you, the negotiation documents they offered you that would confirm your side of $4,000 for the whole game. You should be able to easily produce that considering you've already broken the NDA, so there's no reason not to to prove that you're being truthful here. It, this should be an easy slam dunk if this is all a lie. But then she goes on to say that she wants to put this entire bloody franchise behind her and move on. You started this. You were the instigator. W what do you mean? It's not like this just came out of nowhere and threw you into this whirlwind of chaos. You were the one that came here and made this whole hoopla. So I really don't understand why she's trying to portray herself as the victim here now. Like, in the first place, she was viewed as a victim of a very shitty negotiation on behalf of Platinum Games and Nintendo. But now, after this information comes forward, her response should be, this is a lie and here's my proof, as opposed to, it's a lie and I just want to move on, I just want to wash my hands of this, this is, now they're being childish, now, now they're playing dirty in the pig pen and I just won't have any of that. I'm moving on. Like, that's not how you do this. You've ruined your own career now. If all of this from their side is the accurate one, your entire career as a voice actress is kaput. You've completely lied about what happened here and fabricated the story, and even called on a boycott of the property, trying to directly hurt them financially off of a completely manufactured story. Again, this isn't directly from Platinum Games nor Nintendo, so I still think it should be taken with a grain of salt. But the fact that this came from two people in the negotiations with Helena Taylor, as well as confirmed by Bloomberg, as well as corroborated by a few other sources inside the industry, it's very strong evidence here against Helena Taylor's claim. I'd like to believe that Helena Taylor didn't lie about this whole thing and is going to come out of nowhere with this ace card like Yugi Moto pulling out the dark magician at the last second. But I'm very skeptical now because of this email that was uh, released in the, the, the report as well. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. If she lied about all of this, I think that is beyond scummy. What a fucked up, messy situation. I, I, I really don't even understand what the end goal would have been for her in this case. All it's done is ruin her career as a voice actress, as well as maybe even just in theater to begin with, because if anyone looks up Helena Taylor now, they're gonna find this massive scandal, if it's proven that she lied about all of it. So, this was legitimately just a career ender. She just 
checkmated her whole acting livelihood. And I, I just don't even understand why. If, of course, it all is confirmed. So anyway, I, I just wanted to talk about it because this is kind of a wild development and uh, that's about it. Yeah. Elizabeth Steiner is a lifelong Democrat, a mother of three, and a family physician. In the state Senate, Elizabeth served as chief budget writer, providing health insurance and protecting abortion rights. That's why all these groups support her. Vote for Elizabeth Steiner. Paid for by friends of Elizabeth Steiner. What makes you mad more than anything in the world? What gets under your skin and just ticks you off? I know that this is an iconic question once posed by the great Ned Schneebly in School of Rock, but it applies to what I want to talk about today. Because for one unhinged psychopath, the answer to this question was so baffling, he ends up throwing his life away for something extremely insignificant. We've all got mad at small things, right? Trivial shit that doesn't matter, whether it's, you know, getting killed in a video game that you think is the result of lag, or maybe someone gives you some goofy eyeballs and you don't like the way they look at you and it makes you feel a little uneasy and it makes you upset, perhaps. We've all got mad at something mundane, but one man in Oregon just got so upset that a parade forced him to go on a bit of a detour that he decided to fucking bulldoze through the blockade and then drive through the parade nearly hitting people, including children, and will now likely spend the rest of his life behind bars, rightfully so. It, it, this this is an individual with a, a severe case of stick it to the mon neosis. He fucking lost his mind and filmed himself doing it the entire time, by the way. All because of a slight detour for a parade. Now, there was one intellectual in chat last night that for some reason his comment was so stupid that it's sticking with me and just marinating in my brain about this story. He said, why is he getting punished? No one got hurt. Brother, let me sit you down in your stupid chair real quick. You can't bulldoze through a blockade. And keep in mind, I haven't shown you the video yet, but I will in a second. There is a scene, like straight out of an old 90s action film, where he like ramps his car up on two fucking wheels in order to squeeze through the blockade more efficiently and blast through the parade. You can't do that because you're endangering all the lives around you. I can't believe that that even needs explaining in any capacity at all. Uh, it, like, it blows my mind that I even need to tell you why that's bad. Especially when we've already seen a couple times in the past someone using their vehicle as a weapon during parades where they hit and kill people. Even if his goal wasn't the attempted murder of people at the parade, he almost hit people and this easily could have ended up in a situation where he did hit, harm, or even kill people from this reckless action. So just because he narrowly avoided a fatal catastrophe doesn't mean that he shouldn't be punished. He is not fit to be in society. And not only that, I'm gonna go ahead and give away a big spoiler, he's also a fucking pedophile. He has a rap sheet that extends for like most of his life and a lot of the crimes involve sex crimes with minors apparently. Uh, I'll just go ahead and play you the news segment here that we went over on stream. You see the video of the guy driving through the Portland parade? Oh, that was so fucking weird, yeah. He didn't hit me one. But it was so weird. I didn't see the whole video, but I saw like the first bit. Dashcam footage obtained by NBC affiliate KGW, submitted by prosecutor. Brave showing it. No, he doesn't hit anyone. He, I, I don't exactly. He, they said road rage, but I don't exactly know what it was in particular. But for some reason, he just drives to the parade and then just drives fucking through it. It's crazy. It was unhinged. Jim frustrated, stuck in traffic due to road closures clearing the way for Portland's Grand Floral Parade. His anger boiling over. They got it all blocked up. The Point Center exit. The Convention Center exit. Whoa, wait, so this this was all over the road being blocked off for a parade. Holy shit. I don't think I've ever been that mad over anything in my life. Jesus, he's got that bitch up on two wheels. God damn, he did, like I said, he doesn't hit anyone, but look at this shit. That's terrifying. This is his camera POV. Well, yeah, obviously it's his camera POV. They didn't put like a drone on his hood or anything. For some reason, 
for some reason, he records his own cabin, even though I can't imagine this is an isolated incident with this kind of blow up. Yeah, this is the guy. He caught himself in 4K. Charged with 38 counts, including attempted assault and reckless endangerment. He has pleaded not guilty. Residents in not guilty, huh? Are we sure? I've been framed. From Portland and has been in and out of prison and juvenile detention since he was 15 on sex abuse convictions against minors. Whoa. So he's a pedophile, too. Good lord. What the fuck? For these latest charges, Valerie. All right, Aaron, thank Well then. What a situation. All that because they blocked off the road for a fucking parade. They should just... Well, I mean, he's... I don't think he's leaving jail again. 38 counts? I mean, you... Shocker. You can't do this. You can't just drive through a parade like that. So I don't think he's gonna be leaving jail anytime soon. He was probably late to the Chris Hansen meetup. <laughs> I, I really wonder what he was in such a rush for. I am curious. Man heard the elementary school was about to get out and he wanted to go get good seats. I have no idea what he'd be so angry about for having like a slight detour. You would think someone would be careful driving when they have a suspended license. Well not only that, you'd think he'd be even more cautious having a suspended license and also being a fucking pedophile. Like, the last thing you'd want is for people to know about you. This man just put himself out there in the biggest way possible. The Macy's going back to jail parade. <laughs> Good one. Suspended license, no insurance, and he's self-recording. The self-recording might actually just be a court order, though, to make sure there's no children in his car. Like, I can't imagine this guy would be self-recording on his own volition. This had to be, like, the government stepping in saying, Listen, you can have access to a motor vehicle, but we have to know who's inside your cabin at all times. The gall to plead not guilty, though, when he records himself doing it is incredible. I understand that that's probably just like the standard legal strategy, but man, that is very silly. Keep in mind, this is all alleged. Of course, yes. He allegedly drove through the parade while recording himself screaming and running through this entire, <laughs> this entire celebration and then parking his car. It could have been anyone. We don't know yet. It was all AI. That's gonna be a real legal defense strategy pretty soon. Your Honor, that's not my client. It's a deep fake. My client can't even make this face. I want to show you a bit from his dash cam perspective here because it's diabolical. He goes over the traffic cones and now he starts speeding up. He's treating this like it's a game of Grand Theft Auto 5. So he pops it up here. He's got his action movie stunt going on. He goes through the bigger blockades and the bigger trucks, and then he gets around to the actual parade. And this is where, this is where things get really scary. This is that kind of shit that has you hold your breath when you see the footage, because he is going fast. This man is fucking zooming. He is cruising here, nearly loses control because he, like, hops over the grass there, it seems. And then it almost feels like right here he starts contemplating whether or not to hit people. He then continues to drive through the parade for a lot longer, and there's Just also a like a police officer that tries to get him to stop, he refuses to, and eventually drives out of the parade and, and uh. away. All of this over having to just be slightly inconvenienced because of a detour due to a parade. It's fucking crazy. There are absolute lunatics out there. It's frightening. Just wanted to talk about it a little bit. That's it. That's it. This video is blowing up on Twitter right now because it is just absurd. It's going to make a lot of people rightfully upset knowing that this is a cop and he almost executed a man over mistaking the sound of an acorn falling for a gunshot. So in a nutshell, what happened is officers arrived at the scene, they take a person, put them in the back of their vehicle, and as one of the officers walks by him, patrolling like an NPC out of fucking 007 Goldeneye, he hears a noise, and this noise startles him. It's like a dog on 4th of July hearing a firework in the distance. And he panics, freaks out, and does a double combat roll true combo. This man was looking for iframes, and it turns out that sound he heard that he mistook for a gunshot was the sound of an acorn hitting the top of his patrol car. 
You can't even hear anything in too. the body cam footage. I don't even hear an acorn falling. This guy must have the most sensitive ears of all time. This guy can fucking hear the future, I guess, or something. <laughs> so he hears an acorn fall somehow, and then he immediately does this uh, like combat role action movie stunt and unloads, just mag dumps into his patrol car with that individual inside. <laughs> now, luckily, the individual God, wasn't killed Charlie. during this panic. Because this skittish douchebag has stormtrooper aim, luckily. So, he gets to live to see another day. The, an acorn almost fucking sent him to the grave. The officer's fighting ghosts. He is actually fighting his own imagination right now. He thinks he got shot. There was no shooting, it was a fucking acorn. The only thing shot is this man's brain. It is rotted from the inside out. He's like, I've been shot! And then he goes, <laughs> like he's doing the fucking Murloc sound effect from Hearthstone. It's it's all make-believe. Fucking SpongeBob and Patrick in their box couldn't drum up an imagination like this. But there's a very real person in harm's way that he is shooting at over nothing. So he's lying on the ground, I've been hit! <laughs> Fucking continuing to pump lead into this vehicle on this guy who has done nothing to shoot at the officer or put the officer in harm's way. It's, it's infuriating to watch. What kind of training did this officer go through? Because there's no way he should have ever been cleared for duty if he is this frightened by his own shadow. Then he starts like Rugrats, Tommy Pickles crawling away, going like, oh no, you know, really going through it, thinking he's been shot. I, I gotta see my family again, not like this. I won't go out like this. Not, not when my country's in danger, I'm gonna protect all of us. And he, he just crawls away, it's so fucking pathetic. Because it was an acorn that fell. Like, I don't know how you can be this delusional. Dangerously delusional. Someone almost died from it. But I'm good. Yeah, Goober, you. Stop around there. I may just want to climb up until I flash red, then do a wall bounce, try to jump. I think this will be a hyper. And then super. Super's gonna be scary though. So, you're aiming? Go. Okay. Okay, 
so it's one, two, up, over, down, wall bounce. Okay. Fucking god, yes! Finally, dude! Oh, go fuck yourself, bro! Please get me out. Please, please just get me the fuck out of this. Oh, thank you, Charlie! Charles White, you are the reason I was able to pull through with this. I nearly went through about 17 mental breakdowns through this shit, so... If, if I were to ha like, if I were to describe my enjoyment, to put it nicely, let's just say... <laughs> It wasn't that good, but that's Glyph Max Percent. That's it. I, I did. I did Glyph Max Percent. <laughs> Please tell me I have the tile now. Woo! Yeah! Alright, that, that's like so cool to see. Oh my god. Oh, this is so cool. I, I, I like did everything. I did it. I, I did it. I, 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 I did it. I did it. Oh my god. Um. Like, the amount of bad luck I did with getting the Moonberry and Voidside B-side Golden were terrible. With Voidside B-side, I didn't get as unlucky because I didn't have a Golden Room death. But I did get so fucking unlucky for... Moonberry, because I think I had like s eight fall side deaths. And the order I do is winter, spring, uh, fall, summer. But I think I did spring, then winter. Winter here. But I had eight to fall. I had five to summer. I had two separate deaths to void. And then one to the Moonberry room itself. Like, like the time here, this is like a couple hours above or above my glyph full clear golden time. But this is like so much easier. It's just I I lost my mind over this. Okay, I nearly got it the first try, day three. That's my that's when I had the moonberry death. This is day six. I got it basically my second my first one getting two goldens in a row. My first one doing that, like. It's day six. I those three days. I nearly fuck those four, three days, uh, three, four, and five. I nearly lost my fucking mind over that. This was like so fucking unfun. I cannot begin to describe how unfun that was. That that was fucking torture. I would genuinely take some types of physical pain over doing this shit again. Uh, but, okay, I'm done with this. Finally.